Hi there, Michael Sankey from Charles Darwin University. Uh, this is just a brief presentation uh, recapping uh, some of the information I shared at the recent Micro-Credential Summit in Barcelona. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to be in Barcelona. It would have been lovely, but uh, I was presenting it here from Darwin. Uh, first of all, though, I would like to say that Charles Darwin University does acknowledge all First Nations peoples across the lands on which we live and work, and we pay respects to elders past and present. And I'm presenting here from Larrakia country up in Darwin. I would like to, in this little presentation, look at some discernible and emerging trends within the notion of micro-credentials within the Australian context. That is looking at the rise of what is known as the skills economy. What's gonna happen throughout the university accord that's uh, being currently being negotiated? What the roles, the role of micro-credentials will play in this? And also, and how that is informed by the micro-credentials framework and the development of a national portal and some of the grants and funding that's been made available over recent days uh, from the government. And of course, that leads us to what future directions might happen within the micro-credential space within Australia. First of all, I'd like to start with the thought that in last year's budget, uh, there was a very strong emphasis on skills and training. Now, 480,000 free TAFE and uh, voc -ed places were established. Uh, there was a billion dollars set aside in the National Skills Agreement, uh, 20,000 additional university places, uh, 10,000 new energy apprenticeships. The government established Jobs and Skills Australia. A lot of this means that uh, there's a greater, for us, particularly in terms of universities, a greater reliance on technology uh, to conduct, to record, to progress, and to further augment the skills-based education uh, that we're moving towards. And this affects a whole range of different things, like our learning platforms, our curriculum management systems, our student management systems, how we record these skills, these micro skills, and how we align them with our fuller courses and units that we offer at university and at VET. Now, uh, the, the university, uh, is part of and will make representation to the review of higher education, one of the major reviews of higher education over the last 30 years. Uh, and it's quite clear from some of the elements of that review, and we'll look at some of those in a sec, that the, that the current government is looking to really create some new synergies between vocational education or TAFE and higher education. And uh, this will very much guide the direction of these sectors over the next while. So the, some of the key review areas in this in the accord negotiations around meetings Australian Australia's knowledge and skills needs and how that might look in the future. It's around access and opportunity for people. Uh, it's about investment and affordability. It's about governance, accountability and the sense of community. It's how we are making connections between vocational education training and higher education systems. It's about quality and sustainability of these systems and the delivery of new knowledge, innovation and capability. Now let's think about micro-credentials and what areas they explicitly touch into these areas in the review. So micro-credentials will play a part in the knowledge and skills development. Uh, it will look at access and opportunities so that people can participate in uh, these micro-credentials in lead up to university or as part of their professional development opportunities moving forward. It's certainly looking at making the connections between vocational education and higher education and how portable these micro-credentials are across those systems. And it's also, of course, about delivering new knowledge, uh, innovation and capability for those that may be particularly using those as uh, to augment other studies that they might have done. And a very strong emphasis within that across industry. Now, back in November 21, uh, the micro-credentials uh, framework was developed and I was part of the working group that helped develop that under the leadership of Beverly Oliver, Professor Beverly Oliver. And that was a great step forward for Australia because we've been talking about this for a while. We'd seen some other uh, micro-credential frameworks developed in other countries and particularly in Europe. And uh, so, Here's the definition that we came up with associated with this framework. That a cert it is micro-credential is a certification of assessed learning. So it's assessed. 
uh, to learning or a competency with a minimum volume of learning of one hour and less than an AQF award qualification. So less than your normal traditional uh, university course or unit. Uh, that is additional, alternate, complementary to, or a component part of an AQF award qualification. So that's important that it's, it is being recognized that it's gonna be part of the AQF framework. So some of the unifying principles associated with the framework are that micro-credentials should be outcome-based, that they should be responsive to industry needs, that they're tailored to support lifelong learning, uh, that they're transparent and accessible. And so the government sees micro-credentials as one of the fastest growing post-secondary course types. Uh, there is some use of micro-credentials in pre-university and certainly across VET, but it, they're seeing it probably more at the post-secondary uh, level and particularly in terms of post-grad studies. Uh, they see them being used across skill sets within VET uh, and units of competency. They certainly see them as modularized uh, and assess components of existing higher education curriculums or subjects, uh, that they're assessed industry learning. So vendor qualifications and short courses, things like that, which might be you know, Microsoft certificate and things like that. So they can be industry led as well. And that there might be other forms of assessed learning or competencies. So those not currently uh, accredited through other through our regulatory bodies. So how does that look? Okay, so things like those Microsoft certificates or Google certificates and things like that. And how do our university entrance, uh, our, our uh, SATAC and QTAC and places like that make sense of these micro-credentials as they're presented to them saying, oh, look, we've done all these micro-credentials. What is the value of those? And this, the framework helps those UX um, actually put a, a, a weighting to those micro-credentials. So the, in that, there are some real possibilities for micro-credentials. So uh, there have been two prominent reviews around this uh, over recent years. In 2021, there was a Strengthening Skills uh, report, which, which was an expert review of the Australian VET system. And it noted that there is the potential for providing more flexible training options for industry. And it looked at uh, reviewed recommendations, consideration for further encouraging the use of micro-credentials in this space. There was also, uh, there is also the review of the Australian Qualifications Framework and the AQF review recommended that policy guidance uh, and guidelines be developed to allow the recognition of micro-credentials for credit. And we're certainly going there. These reports do highlight that micro-credentials can and will modernize Australia's training landscape as part of that, the, you know, the broader reform work that is happening across VET and higher education. The other element that uh, the government has, has, has developed is this, this notion that there is a, a micro-credentials pilot. So they've got behind it with some money. Okay, so in November last year, uh, they provided uh, a whole range of guidance around a pilot process they wanted to develop, initially with higher education providers, universities, uh, but then extending that out into uh, other industries. And so over the period, there's 18.5 million in grants, essentially at a hundred thousand, up to $100,000 per credential to be developed. And so this is the government putting some weight behind that. Um, the pilot itself uh, will mean that the micro-credentials that are developed are open access uh, and available across Australia uh, and it encourages the education providers to engage with industry. So you have to engage with industry to get the money. Uh, and it's got to be linked to some of the national priorities as well. So in round one, they, they, uh, which was launched last year, late last year, uh, they said there's uh, $2 million for this initial pilot of the scheme. And uh, we've put in, I think, 10 proposals or something like that from our university, uh, which is looking at that partnership with industry particularly. And then round two, which will happen a bit later this year, uh, there's 14.5 million up for grabs uh, and that will be spread out to other higher education providers as well. And so this funding is, is available across the next few years uh, and they anticipate 
will be make micro credentials available to about four thousand people. I suspect that it will be a bit more than that, given the micro credentials that are being uh, proposed. So we are at this very early stage in stage one in round one, and we are anxiously awaiting the outcomes of that first round. We hope to find out uh, very soon. They're suggesting in April, so it's March now, the end of March. We're finding out in April if we were successful in some of those grants. Now. One of the, the motivations behind this is to really get some uh, new momentum in behind the new microcred seeker platform that uh, UAC and the Department of Education uh, launched uh, at the end of last year. And so this platform uh, allows uh, any provider to make their micro credentials available through a national platform. And so in all ranges of in all fields. However, it's not been fully understood by a whole range, a number of providers of what that actually means. So, for example, this example here of a university that put up has put something up on the micro credentials portal uh, that micro micro cred seeker. They put up one course, and its uh, price is eleven thousand dollars, and it takes twelve months to do the course. Now, in my mind, that's not a micro credential. Uh, that's more a normal course. But there are other examples on the portal of uh, you know 50 hours of work and it'll cost about 400, $440 what's that to do a gate uh, gateway to business mandarin um, there's also this one here that's six weeks and fourteen hundred dollars it's uh, analysis evaluation of assessment in learning design so these are the types of th typically these are the types of units or courses that we'd see in the micro credentials portal or the micro cred seeker portal um, Interestingly, recently I got an email uh, only a couple of weeks ago from this crew here, the Institute of Applied Technology, and they're a consortium of uh, TAFE New South Wales, Macquarie University, UTS, uh, CPB, Microsoft, and the University of Western Sydney, the Western Sydney University. And uh, they've developed their own portal to uh, provide micro-credentials in the technology space. Now, they haven't made, I mean, I haven't checked. I don't know if these are also available through the national portal, but they've they've been done this quite smart. You know, they've they've focused it in on this notion of applied technology and, an, and a, at a state level. And I think there's a whole number of opportunities in here for other states to do similar things with industry partners. So they're partnered with Microsoft and CPB in this particular case. And you can see here, you can get a whole range of different micro-credential courses, cyber governance and cyber planning, cyber security. So quite topical areas at the moment. And so you can do them across um, uh, digital or construction, across micro-skills, micro micro-credentials, the different course types. Uh, a little smart move there from the New South Wales government. And uh, I'm, I'm assuming we'll see some similar moves from some other areas quite soon. In our own particular case, I mean, we're, we're playing in this space as well, particularly around this notion of industry partnerships. We're just, uh, uh, you know, we're, but in all this, we're not, we don't want to cannibalise our current programs. This is about new stuff. It's not about taking what we already have and breaking it up in new ways. It's about creating new business for our uh, institutions, uh, which do need to align across the VET and RG, HE continuum. And that, and that, that the common thing there is this notion of skills. As I mentioned earlier, skills aren't necessarily something higher education has been comfortable with over the years. But as we move into this space, as we start to articulate the skills through micro credentials, they become uh, the, the uh, currency of these new types of, of uh, credentials. So really, um, there are some fun times ahead, I think, as we start to integrate into the new skills economy, as higher education starts to think, OK, well, how are we going to notionally build in these skills into our into our higher education courses to align with these credentials uh, as we look to fully participate in this micro credentials agenda uh, it's going to mean that we're going to be looking at more hybridized and aligned learning opportunities uh, and particularly helping our students to be productive and to co-design their future that's the point of all this and that's what the government is wanting to lift up this notion of lifelong learning here in Australia. So very brief presentation. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for joining me.